So how often do you find yourself working on one of your drawings and you think you're coming to what might be the end of it and you don't really know how to finish it? Are you supposed to throw in more details, render out more zones into a higher polish? And you might be doing those types of things. And as you do, it kind of might still feel like you're abandoning ship, just kind of crossing your fingers that there's going to be enough there there with all the details and the polish. And despite all of that, it might still feel like you're questioning if this will even be a meaningful piece. What I mean is this piece, is this drawing going to feel like something personally important, something that says something about you, about how you feel about your subject matter, or about just a, a little story that it might tell? Basically, is it a little bit more than just a copy of something that kind of looks neat to you? If those are the kind of questions you're often grappling with, well, definitely stay tuned for this video. In this video, I'll show you my full process for how to begin carry out and complete drawings that are uniquely my own and personally meaningful by considering fundamental principles of composition and design so you can do that for your next drawing too. And before we get going, my name is Carolyn and I've been teaching artists how to master drawing for over 15 years and currently the only way I work with artists is in my online mentoring program called the Legit Artist Bootcamp where I take dedicated artists who love drawing but are feeling stuck and frustrated with their skill set to fully mastering drawing so they can be the artist they've always dreamed to be. If that is interesting to you, be sure to check out several links that I put below this video and you can see what working with me is like. But for now, let's make sure we get into this composition lesson. So if you're wired in a similar way to me, you're probably not satisfied by simply copying images. Maybe that was fine when you first started out, but you've come to this point where drawing or painting are a means for learning more about yourself and the world you live in and sharing your values and things of that nature. So coming back to what I was saying earlier in the intro about not knowing when a drawing is finished, that is an issue of not knowing what you want your piece to be about. Let me elaborate. If you come across a cool photo of a wolf and you start a drawing of it simply by copying what you see, that's usually exactly when you get stuck in the what else does this need, is this finished kind of a loop. So here's my number one tip to avoid ever getting stuck in that place again. Begin with noticing yourself. What I mean is, what do you like about this wolf? It might seem like a dumb question and you might say just, well, the wolf, duh, but Help yourself out with some prompts here. Is it the color? Is it the shapes that you're noticing? The values, the textures? Is there an implied story? What implies the story for you? In this example, you see me go through a roster of questions that touch at the fundamental drawing principles like gesture and shape, etc. So I'm noticing certain gestural connections that you see on the right hand side, they're in orange and in purple, and just even smaller ones I'm pointing out there between the muzzle and the hair on the neck. I'm noticing those, those are interesting to me. And you also might notice how I mark the little textural bits on the neck fur on the right drawing. So I'm basically telling myself, hey, I like the shape that's created by the gesture. But I'm also liking those smaller shapes that I'm seeing at the neck. So then you can keep going with your exploration of what is it that you are intrigued by and see if there are any other fundamental principles that kind of hit the mark for you. Is it a certain value combination? Is it a certain sense of three-dimensionality? Is it a sense of lighting? Is it a sense of contrast? What are those drawing principles that stand out to you in this drawing? So in this piece, this wasn't so much about form. This wasn't about it looking three-dimensional. This was really about how cool the smaller shapes are, like those little tufts of fur, in relation to those big gestural shapes created by the swoop of the back into the tail. So with that in mind, I am then starting to think about design concepts. So I'm thinking, okay, what are my 
puzzle piece shapes. If I reduce this wolf into very simple shapes, like strip out all the details, what am I dealing with? And which shape am I assigning a light, middle, or dark value to? Are there gonna be only dark values? Are they going to be a range from super light to super dark and make it a high contrast? Or is it going to be all even and very light? So I often don't know these answers when I start. That is why I explore. And this is where art as an exploration comes in. We don't begin with answers. We only begin with questions that lead us to our own personal answers. So here I'm testing out different value shapes for this super reduced down wolf example. And I kind of like how there's a darkness on top on the snout end, and then there's a darkness at the bottom at the tail end, and how we're transitioning out from that darkness into some lighterness, and how then we pick up the darkness again at the other end of the body. So dark to light from this end, and then dark to light from the other end with this very clear separation, because that little jagged shape between the elbow and the tummy, that is interesting to me. So as I'm exploring this, I'm still paying attention what else is interesting to me. So I like that jagged shape because it reminds me of the jagged shape of the fur, so there's a bit of an echo there. And since art is really our moment to share with the world what we like and how we see things. We want to pay attention to like what is standing out to us and kind of give a pedestal for those things so we can share them. So here I continue to engage with these simplified puzzle piece like shapes and I'm exploring do I want to play that darker belly and tail shape against the shoulder or do, you, do I want to leave this more as a gradual transition. Again, I don't begin knowing often what it is I exactly like. That's why I have to test them out in these little um, thumbnail sized swatches. And as I test them out, a wonderful question that will always lead me closer to a meaningful um, result is what else is it like? What else does it make me think of? Meaning, these reduced down versions, what else is it reminding me of? So in this case, I'm noticing how there's certain complex areas like that jagged fur on the neck. And then there's certain simple areas. And in general, playing complexity against simplicity is always a winning bet because it's like having a simple stage for very complex characters that are acting out the drama of the piece, that's a winning combination. And so therefore I'm picking this more simpler, flatter, dark shape for the belly and tail, as opposed to that gradual gradation I tested out on the bottom left. Another reason for why I picked that version is because as I asked that question, what else is it like? What else does this version make me think of? The word frozen came to my mind. And I want you to pay really close attention that when you're asking those kinds of questions of your drawing and of your subject matter, what words keep popping up in your head? Write them down. And you don't have to do anything with them at first, but as you keep working your drawing, you see how you can spin them into the fabric of the drawing. So mine came back as frozen, and that word was perfect for me because that wolf appears like he's frozen by fear, and that is implied not only by the pose, but also by the jaggedness of that puzzle piece shape that just looks like a broken piece of frozen ice to me. So often these very abstract ideas can echo the narrative of the pose, for example. 
So let's come back to this idea of playing complexity against simplicity. So complexity is anything that sparkles. So that would be um, small detailed shapes, high contrast. It would be very gradual gradations. So all the stuff that I'm putting into the neck zone right now, those are all the sparkles. And those are bringing excitement and they're going to draw our attention. And we want them to be harmonizing with stabilizing simplicity. So earlier in my say it's small or not at all example, you saw me make a decision for where I'm going to put all my rendering, for where I'm going to put the details. So I'm not going to be confronted at the end with this question of like, do I need more detail? Do I put more detail at the tail? I'm deciding ahead of time that, hey, the tail and the haunches, that area, that's going to be fairly simple. It's just going to be a fairly flat value tone. And then in the neck area where I have those cool fur shapes and where I have the features and th the teeth and all of that, that's where I'm going to go all in on building interest. So as I continue working on this and to ensure that I don't get sidetracked into putting detail all over the place, I'm guiding myself with this notion of keeping the main idea alive. What was my main idea? My main idea or ideas, sometimes you have multiples that are working together, was the gestural swoop of the nose to the neck, playing that into the gestural swoop of the back into the tail, and then adding focal points with those detailed shapes on the neck and that sharp frozen looking shape behind the shoulder at the rib cage zone. So remembering that, that this is my main idea. As I keep rendering, as I keep fleshing out the image, I will pause every so often, zoom out visually to ensure that other areas aren't starting to compete with those zones of interest that I have dedicated at first. Um, to ensure that I'm not starting to vary more than I had set out to do initially. So up till now, I've mainly stuck with working with the object itself, meaning the wolf itself. I just kind of took the subject and isolated it from its surrounding and designed the shapes and the gestures and the details and the focal points within the subject itself. However, a strong piece of art is often set within a container. So you have to pick the right frame for it. Are you going to present this within a vertical? Are you going to present it within a horizontal? How much space is it going to occupy within that space that is going to have a huge impact on how the viewer is going to feel. Is this wolf feeling trapped or is it feeling like it's back in a corner or is it feeling like it's like this tiny little thing in the vast space of nothingness? Those choices will have to be intentional and again you get to test them out first to make sure they tell the story you want to tell the thing that you want to imply rather than just a haphazard unconscious choice that you made. And I'll link a video on the top right for you if you want some more help with choosing the right container. So here's my little example of how I want this wolf to feel and not just what container do I want it to be in, but also this is going to be my next leading question. What value scheme do I want to present this inside of? So value scheme just means like, what are the basic distributions of lightness and darkness? Do you have overall dark values and just a few light ones? Or do you have mainly light ones and just a few punchy dark um, sections? Or is it like a mid range value where everything is kind of like middle gray? As with the container, those choices will have an effect. So what I was going for is I wanted to have high contrast, meaning going from like really punchy dark darks to very bright lights, but 
having an overall dominant darkness because it does seem like the wolf is trapped the wolf is being backed into a corner it's being defensive and like that gives me a dark feeling on the inside so then i want to share that with the viewer by applying a value that kind of reflects that darkness and yet i also want to have high contrast because this is an explosive looking situation somebody could get hurt here and so high contrast has like this popping effect like a little clash and so if it was just dark with no with no contrast i wouldn't get that feeling i would be just very subdued so pick the right value scheme for the story you're trying to tell again let yourself be guided by the question what else is it like so i was saying this is explosive and a pop and um somebody might get hurt like so those are all leading ideas that will help me pick the correct value scheme now that leads us to another point beforehand as you are making these decisions within the small thumbnail scaled um, versions what your value scheme might be make sure that as you start the actual drawing it is in a technique in a medium that will allow you to get that value scheme so i knew i wanted to have a high contrast with rich darks value scheme so i used charcoal because i know that with charcoal i can get really dark darks especially if i have a more waxy charcoal like a conte that i layer on top at the very end like i'm doing at the tail and some of these um, furry bits at the neck i know that i can get to a really rich dark with this medium so if you're choosing a 2b pencil a graphite pencil and you're struggling with getting to that kind of rich darkness it's because you didn't align your medium choice with the idea that you're starting to formulate for your piece. Now I've gotten pretty far along in this drawing and I've used those ideas that I've been sharing with you so far to ensure I'm staying on a path that I actually want to go down. Towards the end, that last guiding principle for me is to start to listen for the click. Now, what do I mean by that? Finishing something well, carrying out an intention in your drawing well, doesn't just have to do with doing and like adding more things and doing more technical stuff. It actually also has to do with being able to listen to your piece as you're building it. And there will come a point when on the inside, as you're looking at your drawing, there are these little voices that tell you, Mm, not quite there yet or ah oh, yes over here that's getting close and this is a very almost irrational way of communicating with yourself it's very intuitive however we have to trust that those intuitive nudges are guiding us in the right direction and the beauty is that if we have followed the steps that I have explained to you, you don't have to worry if you can trust these nudges because you've already set up a game plan for yourself. So here, for example, I'm making a drastic choice. I'm making this choice of blending a bunch of stuff and notice how much information I am losing. Now, if I didn't have a plan ahead of time, I might freak out and abandon this piece. Like, oh shit, I just lost it all and all the effort that I've put in is now gone. And you know, I might go down that route. But I knew that as I was listening to my inner dialogue, that it wasn't quite there yet. I needed to test something different. I needed to try something more extreme. I wanted to have softer gradations and build up an even richer um, contrast. And to do that, I had to try what happens if I blend certain zones and then I work back over with my roadmap of okay details go here gradations go there simple dark shapes go here and here's where I want the contrast so I am not lost I just needed to make a drastic adjustment and now I can see my plan through 
until I hear it click. <laughs> what I mean is, again, I lean back, I look at the drawing, and just add a little bit more dark here, a little bit more light there, I make a smaller shape over here, and then all of a sudden it feels like a puzzle is literally falling into place. And that is that click I'm talking about, and you can only catch it if you're paying attention. You're not just hustling, 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 but you're actually pausing and reflecting and letting the piece speak to you. And like that, I never feel like I'm just copying. I always feel like I've discovered something about myself, about what I resonate with, what I respond to, what it is I wanna bring out in something. And it feels very, very meaningful. And of course, you need to have technical skills to bring that meaning out but it's very much something that's in reach for me, that I'm in control of, and it's not something that happens haphazardly. So this is it. This is my process for ensuring that my drawings actually are meaningful to me and that they say a little bit something about me and how I see the world and that others can understand what I'm trying to say to them. If that was interesting to you and you are really interested in learning more about this, learning to apply these principles of composition, learning to master not just proportions and gestures and all of those fundamentals that go into a good solid drawing, but you need a little bit of a helping hand, please consider looking at my online mentoring program called the Legit Artist Bootcamp. It might just be the thing for you to get you to that next level and I'd be so honored to be that one guiding you to that next level. And for now, I'll just say until next time. <laughs>